I'm a cyclist and I live in the Pennines and welcome to my channel and today I'm back out on my winter bike which is my good old faithful Kona Cooler. Now it used to be a hardtail mountain bike but I've since converted it to what I would call a hybrid Frankenstein bike and I've recently modified it to a 1x11 so what does that mean? Well it means that on the front it now has a single 38 tube chain ring which drives an 11 speed cassette on the back which has a range from 30 t down to 11 and to sum it up it's extremely low geared it's great fun to ride and it's low maintenance and at 30 miles an hour you're going flat out You got different wheels on. No, it's for the aerodynamics, isn't it? You know, like you have bigger back wheel, don't you? <laughs> we have dynamics. We're in Wally, Mike, aren't we? Well, these, Darren. I know we haven't set off yet. I'm, these. I'm faffing. I can't see out of these. It's, there's no daylight. So I'm going to put them on. <laughs> Let's get them on. Good in, sir. That's better. That's <laughs> not. What are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, I can out, Wally. And so yes, it's December, we're back in Worley, and there's the Aspinall Arms pub, and me and Mike are heading out into the trough, and there's the Old Hallows Church, just ahead on the right. And then we passed a very familiar signpost. That's your favourite signpost? Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah? Go on, Mike, read it out. Uh, black pudding, two pound, bacon, six pound, sausages. Trough of Boland? Eleven. Might be in school, isn't it? So anyway, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Darren, and this is Mike. And no, I'm Albert. We are cyclists. We live in the Pennines. The Pennines are over that side there near Pendle Hill. And we're making our way on a little ride just to break the winter cobwebs down because the weather's been shocking. I mean, it really has been bad, hasn't it, Mike? Oh, yeah. We've had ice, snow, rain. Oh, yeah. We've had rain nearly every day yeah. since June. Yeah. And today is, I think it's the 17th of December and it was time to get back out on these fantastic lanes we're six or so miles into the ride and we're in Clitheroe now you can see the castle and the reason why we're going through Clitheroe is because I'm going to drop a Christmas card off to a good friend and colleague I used to work with until most recently so yeah basically we all worked together in a great team we were an outstanding team and uh, it was just disbanded through the company um, and it's quite upsetting so it's all changed but we're going to keep on bike riding getting out there and um, making these videos for you people so this is the b6478 it's clitheroe road and we're heading towards waddington and all of a sudden you just get that rural feeling this is always a great place this is waddington i do like it here it's got a really good feeling about it and shortly afterwards we took on the climb of grindleton fell which starts at the bottom on main street and it's classed as a third category climb, which is 2.3 miles long, with an average gradient of 5%. At its maximum, it's 11.6%. Bit of a tough climb, this. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Mike. Yeah. I'm liking the tarmac. Yeah. Have you seen it? I'm going to lick it. You can't be licking it with that smooth tarmac. The bike feels like it's riding on a velvet cushion. Oh, yeah. That's descriptive, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. Well... <laughs> that was tough. Should we get some good views here now? Yeah. And a good descent on the Slade Burn side. Okay, here's a great descent now. Lovely views ahead. Nice tarmac. Little left hander. There's the trough ahead of us. And there's Mike. Lovely, lovely tarmac. Big right hander approaching. We've got a car coming. Oh yeah, this is great. Now this bike has got the wrong gears for descending. Now I have to say, this was an absolutely brilliant descent. The tarmac was tremendous. It was just so smooth. Like I alluded to before, this bike, flat out, 
I can get it to about 34, 35 miles per hour, but the cadence is through the roof. So I've got to get right down here, I'm in a super aero tuck, and I am gutted for you that the camera angle never quite worked. So unfortunately, all you can see are my hope stereo tube spacers, but not to worry. So let's skip forward a bit further on down the road. And just for the record, that's what 40 miles per hour looks like. That was good, that is really good stuff that, that road's excellent. Very, very good descending on there. Played it safe, nothing silly. Had a bit of fun. And that was worth getting out of bed for, just for that today. And shortly afterwards, we had some commanding views of the trough of Boland just ahead of us. And it's always great to see a flock of geese like that in the air. And then we found a fantastic little back lane as we made our way towards Easington. This was a really nice little quiet road, bits of pick up in places, and it was great. Get the bike over there. This is nice. And this should take us all the way on then to the Howgate Hill descent, which as we already know, was another super fast one. Right, go on. What? You get some speed up, and then I'll try and hang on because I can't pedal on here. Go on, Mike, go on! And with a bit of encouragement, we got Mike fired up a little bit there. And then just look how straight that is. And it's just asking to be attacked. So I got down into the super aero tuck position again, and no sooner had we got up to speed, this was 45 miles per hour, it was all over. But it's still a blast, and honestly, I absolutely love it. I still feel like a little kid out there at times. Guess what? We're at that signpost again. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Go on, mate. Last time you said you got 62, but we thought that were kilometres. I did 62. That were kilometres an hour. Yeah, you've no. got a speedometer on. No, it's all up here, isn't it, mate? It's all psychological. I think I did 67 mile an hour down there. Right, I've got 45.4 on this. And it, I can't pedal that fast, I have to get down, tucked in. The thing is, once you just sort of say, go on mate, go. I've only got like a matter of seconds before I'm up to full cadence yeah. and then... It, it's great fun. <laughs> I didn't realise it would bring us out there. So we're on the, uh, the trough road now. Just went through Newton in Boland. 19 miles and it's not a bad day for December really it's totally different to last time we were here different colours and so just ahead of us now we'll have Dulcet Bridge and there's always an option there for Puddle Ducks Cafe always an option that I always love that view there isn't that a welcoming view look how clean the sheep are as well you see that the sheep are really clean 21 miles, there's Puddle Ducks, Mike. Yeah. Oh, it's great here. Love it. Really is good. I'm in the wrong gear. That's better. So, go on, Mike. Dunsort Bridge, give me your thoughts on when you come here, how you feel. Do you get, like, a nice feeling, an inspired feeling, or? I get like a fuzzy feeling, you know, like, um, like I've won the lottery. Is that the feeling you get? Yeah. Like you've won the lottery? Yeah. Oh, great. Well, I get feelings with places, so when I come here, I can't describe it, but it's a warm feeling. I feel like I want to come back again. I'm never bored of the views. No, I'm not. You remember watching Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxies? You ever watch that? No. Well, a guy called Slarty Bartfast created the Norwegian Fjords and he got an award for it. Slarty? Bartfast. So whenever Bartfast. I look at the trough, Bartfast. I always wonder if Bartfast. he made it. Because well, he it made is this. beautiful, yeah. Oh, yeah, make Well, that. you need to watch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Right. You realise, like, these feelings are hard to explain. What, he made all these hills? If, if he was going to make them, this is what he'd have done. Just this. All right, Barty. Yeah. Oh, right, interesting. I mean, it's quiet, there's no wind. We can hear the birds. It's not quiet, is it? Well, we're here, aren't we? <clears throat> yeah. But 
It's tranquil, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like winning the lottery. Morning. I'd say this is one of the best bits of the trough here as well. Nice and flat. Big wide open space in the valley in the trough. And it's all in Lancashire. Just cycling heaven, isn't it? It is, yeah. So as we made our way along the trough road, we took a right at Burholm Bridge, which then led us onto our lovely quiet road, which is Little Bowland Road, where we have some fantastic views of Geoffrey Hill in the distance. And at this stage, me and Mike were saying, we'll call in at the cobbled corner in Chipping for a spot of lunch. And so for the next few miles, me and Mike put the hammer down just to get to the cafe in good time. 28 mile, the cobbled corner, I fancy going there. And it's closed. What do you reckon, Mike? Do you smell black puddings? No, it's not open, is it? Fortunately, we had a plan B, so we called into the farm shop 50 yards around the corner. We'd always passed it and never been in. So today was the day. It's called the Chipping Farm Shop. The Cobble Corner's just literally 50 yard over there. We've always gone past it, so we'll give it a go. Right, what have we got here? A homemade sausage roll. I think it's got chilli jam in it as well. I think Mike's tucking into his bacon and sausage there. Is it all right? Mm. Cheers. There's some weight in that, Mike. Mm. I bet it weighs the same as a gold bar. Mmm. Yeah. Well, no. And it really was that good. That was excellent, man. How was your bacon? You're good. Try to do that talking when you're eating, Mike. You can do it, can't you? Um, no. He can. He, when he's eating, he can talk while he's got the butty in his mouth. Come on, just describe your bacon, Mike. Um, eight for the sausage, seven for the bacon. That's all right. It's good. Then Mike said he didn't want pudding. He was watching his figure. Watching the figure. You're not watching your figure? Oh, I'm on my millionaire shortcake. That'll get me back to Wally, won't it? See ya. See ya. There's some weight in that as well, Mike. Some weight in this. Is it? Yeah. What? Yeah. You can get one of them. Might you get one? Go on. Yeah. We'll get some rice pudding then on that shelf. I'll turn the rice pudding cold. It's custard, it's not rice pudding. Well, I thought it was rice pudding. No, it's custard, isn't it? Heavenly custard. You like your custard, don't you? I do actually, yeah. They've got a tin of sweets over there, Mike. Looking at. But anyway, it was time to hit the road and leave the warmth of the cafe behind well, us. Well, that were a good cafe, that, Mike. I think you'll have to go up front, Mike, because I'm stuffed. We're not stuffed anyway. We're right. So let's have a look at the map, and there's Wally where we set off from today as we made our way out towards Clitheroe with Waddington, then the climb over Grindleton Fell with Newton and Boland, Dunsop Bridge and Chipping, where we are right now. And we'd covered 28 miles at this point, and the route back was going to give us some great views of Fair Snake Fell, with Blindhurst Fell, Wolf Fell and Bleasdale Moor, where we found ourselves on a labyrinth of lanes, one of them being Hesketh Lane, making our way then towards the town of Longridge, then Ribchester, Copster Green, before finally making it back to Warley. That was a reasonably priced cafe that, Mike! Mine was like £9.95 for all that. I don't know what mine was. Money's no object. Mon nah, money's no object to Mike. And here's an example of the kind of lanes we were cycling on to get back. And when I refer to the labyrinth of lanes, they're all pretty much like this. You've got to pick nice lines, pick smooth lines. It's going to be damp anyway and a bit dirty out there. And read the road ahead, you'll do okay. We're about 36 miles in. This is Longridge. We did a cracking little loop around Bleasdale. I've got Mike on the front, taking the wind for me. <laughs> Get up here, turn left, head back towards Ripchester. You know these routes anyway, don't you? We 
just saying to Mike there, we're in Ribchester now and that descent all the way from the top side is a really good one. I've got me, me back deep section rims on. And Mike's got deep section rims on, on the back. So he's more aero. Just passing the Ribchester Arms. And because of the tailwind, we've got from Longridge to Ribchester, which is a distance of 4.3 miles in just over 12 minutes, which is an average speed of 21.6 miles per hour. And on the cooler, that's quite impressive. And that pretty much brings this ride to an end. And we got back to Worley safely, and in the end we cycled 48 miles. The elevation gain was 3,645 feet, the ride time was 3 hours and 20 minutes, and the maximum speed was a tad over 45 miles per hour. But anyway, on a personal note, me and Mike would like to thank you for all your support this year, and we'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Until the next time, people, and here's to 2024. Did they get it off the ground or something? Frag it. Yeah. So Mike's just stopped for a Jimmy Riddle, and we're near Bleasdale, and there's the hang gliders. Well, that tractor can't go very fast, though, can it? Is that I, don't, I don't know. Well, how does that thing get off up in the air? You can't. You're not telling me a tractor drags that. No. Well, no. Has it got a rocket right. on it? How does it? There's a bloke at the top of the field, Mike. Yeah. And you know, you get like a kite. He runs as fast as he can and pulls <laughs> it and pulls it and pulls it, and then the bloke there takes his foot off the brakes. All oh, right. Yeah. I right, got you. I didn't know that. I thought. Well, I, I, I didn't know. I don't know. I mean, I. I don't know much about it. To be honest. How have you gone on with your, what? your, your thing um, asking Chris Room if he's coming for a ride with us? <laughs> <laughs> we watched uh, Chris Room's latest video where he went round, is it Malaysia, and the Factor Factory. And I left a comment on his channel and then Black Pudding Man found it and put one on as well, didn't you? Yeah. We've invited Chris Room out hey, for a ride in the Pennines. Hey, and it was time to get back out on these fantastic lanes. You know what date is today, don't you? What date is it? It's the day me, me two-year phone contract runs out. I just thought I'd share that. Right. right, thanks for that, Mike. Yeah. Maybe, you know, if one of the phone companies see this video, you know, I've not got anywhere with a black pudding, so maybe I can get free phone out of it. So if you're watching Mr. O2, yeah. You know, you're feeling generous for Christmas. I'm your man. There you go. We've still not got sponsored yet at all. Oh, it's just not enough daylight, honestly. Professor Darren studying at Oxford and Cambridge. Oh. Right. <laughs> so go on, Mike. Don't sort bridge. Give me your thoughts on when you come here, how you feel. Do you get like a nice feeling, an inspired feeling, or I get an. I can't, I can't, I can honestly can't put that in. Yeah.